Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, I've been doing some work to the shop. As you can see, the wall is gone. We're over here to the, well, my uh, right of the forging area when I'm facing it. So, got a piece of angle iron here. Um, I'm gonna cut a slice off of it. I don't wanna use a hacksaw and I don't want to use an angle grinder, but uh, my dear friend, Mr. Robert Robin, ha has given me a thing, and I have restored it, so we're gonna use it to cut this off. And it is, um, I'm supposing late 1800s, early 1900s, it's hard to find any information on it, but is it Bowman and Blackman, uh, number three rapid cut saw, it's a power hacksaw. So I've got her up and running. I've been cutting things on it. And I want to show you, you may have never seen a machine like this before. I want to show you what it can do. See you in a minute. Well, there she is. Got the motor strapped down there and I've got a V-belt running on it. Originally, these machines ran on a line shaft belt, which was a long leather belt, which usually traveled to an overhead shaft driven by a central engine that would power all the machines in the shop. So it's very barbaric. And everything on it can hurt you and will if you get caught up in it. So I have not installed an on-off switch. I have to unplug it and plug it in. But this is for purposes of demonstration. And if I get hurt, you'll see it. And it'll teach you even more about why you don't get caught up in this little machinery. First thing you have to do is oil everything. Before you even fire it up, you got oil holes. These are very oily machines. If they're not oily, you're not taking care of them. So oil everything that moves on the machine before you start it up. top rod at the heavy saw frame slides up. So if it's nice and greasy, you're good to go. And you chuck up the steel in the little vise. Figure out where you want it. I got a line marked on there. Clamp her down clamp moved it a little bit so I'm trying to cut off about a quarter inch piece roughly and make sure the little toggle is forward this way is engaged this way is disengaged make sure it's disengaged Let's plug it in. Very quiet. Now, here's the dangerous part. Gotta make a little adjustment. I flipped the auto shut off upside down. I had to build it because it didn't have one. So hold on while I fix that. See you in a minute. Alright, I've fixed the auto shut off. Now here's another feature. It has a little knock where you could rest it in the up position. Uh, I wouldn't put your hand or anything under it when it's like that because that's pretty heavy cast iron frame. If it falls, well, you can surmise what will happen. It's got a little lever here. Stick it back, get it ready to cut. I'm not going to lean over it again. Uh, I was being careful, but let's not show dangerous stuff like that. Turn it on. Keep everything out of the moving stuff. Here she goes. This is not a fast process. That's what the auto shut off is for. You can set this thing on a cut 
big piece of steel or whatever and just let it do its thing. I like to use this thread cutting hole. A little bit on that steel you're cutting. Kind of cool the blade and take the shavings out. Get you up here where you can see it a little better. Get you on the cut. Yes, they are painfully slow but the cut quality is immaculate. Now this is going to take quite some time and you already see what the machine is doing so I'm going to let it record but I'm not going to speak because I'm going to speed up from about 6 minutes and 50 seconds on. Or 7 minutes on.
for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm not going to forge this right now. I'm going to make a separate video taking this small quarter inch square piece of two inch angle iron or angle steel, mild steel, and I'm going to forge it into a thing. You could make a heart out of it, you could straighten it and make an S hook out of it. It's an excellent way to cut stock, especially if it's large stock. Uh, you could rig out an oiler on it. I didn't have to oil it very much, um, but I would suggest oiling your blade for the life of the blade and do not cut any hardened material on a power hacksaw. Unless there's some kind of magical blade you can buy for it that'll handle it. Three swats, it's dead. No teeth. Yep, it'll be toothless. Anyway, the cut quality is superb. It makes a perfectly straight cut. If you're doing other things in your shop, you can prepare your stock and go ahead and get it in the machine and uh, get it operating and uh, make sure to keep uh, people away from it, animals away from it, and things that can get caught in it away from it. And after probably 140 years at the most, the thing still performs. Well, I hope you gleaned something from this and uh, I'm happy to have the power hack running. I can cut hammer billets and things with it. And uh, my apologies for not posting more videos. I have been very, very busy. Uh, but I have not forgot about you. And I definitely am going to be posting more videos in the very near future as often as possible. Well, that's all I have for this evening. Till next time. Bye.